All right, thank you for joining us at the Startup Loft. Uh, a lot of people are here at the summit to learn about serverless, which is, you know, API Gateway, Lambda, DynamoDB, and more. Um, a startup based here in San Francisco who is built entirely on serverless is Track. And we have Alex here today to tell you about how they're using serverless. Um, and please ask him as many questions as you can. So uh, please welcome Alex. Hello, um, I'd like to start out by saying um, thanks for Amazon for taking us here. Um, who here has ever received a pay stub before from an employer? Two people are employed here, just two? Okay, so what the cool thing about a pay stub is besides seeing how much money you're making is that your employer is actually taking care of all the taxes for you. You're not worrying about it, all you have to worry about is the re refund at the end of the year, right? So um, that is what Track does. We do automatic auto withholding uh, for the self-employed. So we are following them throughout the year, being their financial wingman, making sure that they are saving enough for taxes and not spending what they owe. All right? So I'm going to go a little bit about what, uh, over about what Track is, how we actually work, and then dive into how we've done that on a completely serverless platform. So I know this is a little hard to read here, but uh, Track is pretty easy. Um, you sync your bank account to us. We use our machine learning data to follow you throughout the year and identify if any one particular transaction is subject to uh, self-employment taxes. If we think it is, we talk to you about it, and we actually put that money aside in a uh, FDIC-insured uh, savings account, and then we make sure that you are notified the entire way by giving you your very own self-employed uh, pay stub. And then at the end of the year, all your money has already been shipped to the IRS, you have no worries whatsoever, um, and you not have a big tax bill at the end of the year. So what I'm going to go over is um, how we've set up on serverless. So I'm going to go over how we've made a web app, how we do data processing. We have to go through and crunch through a lot of financial data. Um, how we actually do job queuing. We have to send out a lot of pay stubs every Friday to all the self-employed people on our platform. We can't just do that in one big call. And then go into actually how you're going to deploy this serverless architecture um, when you're making changes to your system. Uh, the first step uh, would be to create a web app. So all of you guys here are probably developers. You have an app out there or a website that has a front end and a back end. So how are you going to do that um, in a serverless manner? Uh, when you're designing your back end, maybe traditionally you'd have an EC2 instance there. You'd maybe put some type of um, web application or web server on there. You have requests coming in, and you'd route those requests to whatever kind of logic you want to run. So in the serverless world, the way we've set up is we have our users interacting directly with the client to go to the API gateway. And after every different request on the API gateway, you're triggering a different Lambda. So if it's logging in, it may trigger in the login Lambda. Or if it is checking your, getting all your transactions, all your 1099 transactions, it's going to go and pull that back. Uh, so you're going to hit the API gateway. You're going to hit the corresponding Lambda that we're triggering off that request, a get request, a put request, or whatever it is. Um, and then those lambdas may subsequently hit DynamoDB. It may hit S3 to pull down some documents we have stored there. It might even doing like a big uh, search. Like, for example, when you're onboarding, you're searching for which bank you want to link to track. It's going to go through and do all that cloud search really fast, return through the lambda, return through API gateway, and back to the user uh, on the client. And that's really it. It's super simple. There was no, obviously, no server management. We don't have to SSH into a box or anything like that. Any questions on how to, the back end? Yeah. What's that? Do you use any key manual for encrypting the files in S3? Um, right now, the way we do it, we're pretty simple. We just do sign URLs when we pull it back from S3. Um, all right. So obviously, you need a front end, right? Uh, we are uh, fortunate enough to use um, client-side scripting. We don't have any kind of server-side scripting for our web app. So we have it all statically hosted on S3. All right? And then we actually push it to a bunch of cloud edge, uh, cloud edge locations using CloudFront. So this is where we have our code all across the US, Europe, Asia, and our, our users can access our app really, really fast. Okay. And so once they actually download their, their files on, via CloudFront on their, um, on their phone, then they're going through that whole back end schema that I showed you in the slide before. All right. So I know this is kind of hard to read, but what you're seeing here is the end result of a lot of data crunching and machine learning to identify that a particular 
income transaction in a user's bank is subject to self-employed taxation. So we send them a nice little GIF, and say, hey, guess what? We saw that you got paid, congratulations. I think you need to save $100 for your taxes coming up. And they can go ahead and click this. But to make this text even happen, to make even us have the intelligence to do it, we have to do a lot of data processing. So in any kind of generic situation, you're going to have data, I can show you how, kind of how to do that. So in our particular case, we have all this transactional data from all the banks. We throw it right into DynamoDB. All right? And just like the API gateway triggered other lambdas to, do, to, to handle a web request, we're triggering off the DynamoDB insert or modify or put or update or whatever it is to, uh, to trigger another lambda to, to fill out a request. So if a transaction comes in, I say, OK, it's a brand new transaction. Let's go ahead and run the data processing lambda, for example. And that can go ahead and go spill into machine learning or that can go ahead and trigger subsequent lambdas, lambdas with another lambdas, right? And that will set the whole foundation for having this intelligent financial data landscape so we can actually talk to the user intelligently about their transactions. Okay. Any questions on like data processing? This is how you could, you could either not use it for data processing, you could either just have all your users set up in DynamoDB. Infinitely scalable, completely serverless, no management, this is all non-SQL stuff. OK, so I mentioned that as we partner with the users throughout the entire tax year, we're going to keep them in the loop. We have to be transparent about where their money is going. And we're, Track is the only one who gives out the self-employed pay stub. All right, so every Friday, we send out to all our users this pay stub. Hey, congratulations. You got $100 for this website you did. You made $500 doing Uber. Here's how it is. Here's how much we, here's how much we set aside for uh, tax withholding, right? What you're going to find out when you use Amazon and building a serverless uh, infrastructure is you're going to be a lot faster than all your vendors, a lot. And you could probably blast your vendors with a million requests, like if you're using a email service to send out all your emails, if you're not using Amazon, or if you're using a customer service vendor, you can't just blast them. You can't spin up 1,000 or 2,000 lambdas and expect them to handle that request. So you're going to have to queue uh, all your jobs up and send it out. So that's what we have to do with our pay stubs. So what we do is every Friday, we're actually going to send all the instructions to send out our pay stubs in SQS. So it's going to hold all our messages, all our jobs right there. And then on a particular interval, using CloudWatch, which is your biggest friend, I think, um, in this whole uh, ecosystem, uh, you're going to have a lambda polling every certain interval to check if there's any messages to read. And it's going to keep doing it. So this is called the consumer lambda. Uh, this consumer lambda is going to read these messages and then go ahead and spray them out to other actual worker lambdas that actually carry out the function of sending that pay stub out. So you can do this as much as you do, and you tweak the variables, how often you poll, how many messages you read, to actually define a rate limit that you can handle and talk to your vendors. Does that make sense? So if, you're, if your vendor can only take 80 requests per minute, you can mess with these variables, how you're polling, to actually go ahead and um, abide by their restrictions. What else is nice is that all our users are happy because they all actually get that uh, pay stub on Friday. They don't, nothing fails. We're not worried about that. All right. Um, I don't have a little uh, story about this one, but what you're going to find out is you're going to build all these lambdas. Let's say you have 20 API requests. You have 50 different database tables and all these different triggers and stuff. You have all these lambdas. You're going to have to find a way to push all that code out really easily. You don't want to use the web console and sit there and upload 100 different zip files to your lambdas, right? It's going to take a long time to update your whole entire system. So um, the way we do it is we actually use another trigger off of S3. So we'll upload all our zip files of all our code, all our little different node uh, projects for every different lambda up into S3, OK? And then just like API, tr API Gateway triggered, just like DynamoDB triggered, S3 would trigger and initiate this Lambda, Lambda deployer. This is not anything special. It's just a regular Lambda. But what it does is it takes those zip files of every different Lambda, and it goes and it um, deploys it to the other Lambdas. Okay, So it updates the actual code in every Lambda that's either being hit by an API Gateway or whatever. So you can actually create a nice script. You can, um, right now, you can, if you're using the, uh, Code repositories, code repositories on AWS, you can trigger off pushes to Git, to upload to S3, to go to this Lambda and spread all the Lambdas, and you update your code within a couple minutes or 30 seconds or something like that, depending on how many Lambdas 
you actually have. Um, I really recommend even when you're starting out with serverless that you're going to want to really think about deployment first because it's going to get out of hand really fast if you have hundreds and hundreds of lambdas. It's going to be a hard time updating the code. So we've been on this journey for about uh, a year and a half, depending on when you start counting. Um, and we started serverless right away. And there's like a lot of lessons to be learned here. Um, the big one is watch out for the way you invoke lambdas. Not every invocation type is the same. Some services will keep on trying to execute your lambda until it succeeds. If it fails, it will keep trying and trying and trying. And if you're an SMS-based company or an email-based company, you could be sending out test emails or test uh, texts and wasting a lot of money. So you have to watch out how you actually do that. And that kind of brings me into the biggest thing is worry about errors. Um, I mentioned that CloudWatch is going to be your friend. You're going to want to watch if your lambdas are erring. You're going to want to send yourself emails. You're going to want to auto scale the uh, different parameters if you're not having enough memory in, in your uh, lambdas. But if you don't have any transparency into the system, you're going to be running all these lambdas. You, you have a lot of power here. So just make sure you can see the power and understand it. Um, timeouts, I kind of briefly mentioned that. Pay attention to it. Uh, I think the default is three or five seconds. So you could write perfect code. You could have perfectly architected and just not work. You have no idea why it's not working. It's probably just because it's timing out. So you can look at your CloudWatch logs. It'll say that it's maxed, timed out. Um, so make sure you really take time to configure your lambdas correctly before you start uh, running the load on it. Uh, I mentioned figuring out deployment early. I won't go back into that. Um, your system is going to be blazing fast. It, you're not, gonna, not only are you not spending time on DevOps too much, but you just you can spin up all these lambdas and spider them out. And so you really have to harness that energy wise with your vendors. Um, and lastly, I did not architect all this on my own. Um, read your AWS blogs. Like there are a lot of good information that me and my co-founders have found just by reading the blogs and kind of tweaking it to our own use cases. So um, I would really recommend that. So kind of on an ending note, uh, Track is super excited because over the past year, we've, with this serverless architecture, we've been able to churn through about $21 million worth of in, uh, income transactions. And with the architecture that we've set up, we don't even see a problem to 10x that and go into the land of expenses or go into any other kind of things. We're set up in a way where give us whatever you want and we'll just scale from there. So we're really happy to be in that position. Um, yeah, that's it. If you have any questions, I can take them now or you can come up to me later. Thank you. Thank you.